Now you would think determining who won is a pretty easy task, and usually it is. You just tally up the votes, and whoever has the most wins. This is called the popular vote because the winner is determined by whoever has the most votes on election day. Now, technically, you don't need a majority of the votes in most elections. You just need a plurality, meaning more than the next guy. Or gal. Now the race for presidency gets a bit more complicated because in this case, there's one additional step. Back in 1789, when our founding fathers were first writing the Constitution, they didn't necessarily trust you and I to pick the best candidate. So they created the Electoral College. No, this isn't some new Ivy League school, but a group of people who cast their state's ballots for president. Here's what happens. You and everyone else in your state vote for president. But instead of your vote being added to everyone else in the country to determine the winner, your vote just goes to determine who won your state. The real winner for president is the one who wins the highest number of electoral votes, and that is determined by how many states you win. Each state is given a certain number of electoral votes based on their population. Big states like California or New York have a lot of electoral votes. Smaller states like Delaware and Rhode Island have a few. Due to weird mathematical phenomena and alignment of the planets, it is possible to win the popular vote and lose the electoral vote. You see, in many states, a candidate could win by a single vote, but win all that state's electoral votes. I know, it's bizarre, but that's just the way it is. If you want to change it, here's what you gotta no, no, do. No, 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 that's another show. 